Hey folks, Chad here with Extras Trail Cameras. Uh, today we want to touch on a couple, a couple mistakes or a couple things that we see that um, novice or new cellular trail camera users make when they're running uh, or first getting into cellular trail cameras. And I think that we can all agree the marketplace is really starting to shift. Um, you know, buying trends are starting to gear towards those connected devices, those cellular devices. And even though that they've been around for four, five, six years, uh, going back in the, to the three G days, it seems like 2019, 2020. Now we have social mass acceptance or market acceptance of these connected devices. So, like I said, even though they've been around for a while, there's still a lot of people out there that are uh, a little bit unfamiliar with them. They may be curious how they work, and maybe 2020 they're deciding to buy a new camera. A uh, new cellular camera, and it's going to be their first shot at it. So, to be totally transparent, we've only been running these things for two or three years now, going back into the product testing of uh, of the Exodus Render. But, you know, when you're running a large number of cameras, you tend to not only make those mistakes and see the solutions a little faster, but you have a a, a broad sample size of what works, what doesn't work. Um, and then you take that and then, you know, that's, that's why we make these videos. We take our experiences, our failures, our successes, and then try to share them and help educate people, uh, with them. So some of the mistakes that we see people make, um, you know, and we're going to start with, uh, a couple very simple things that are, you would think are pretty obvious, but yet we've made them ourselves and we continue to see customers make them. So one of the very, very simple things is simply the orientation of, of your antenna on your camera. So a lot of cameras have hingeable antennas or breakaway antennas as we call them and they're somewhat fragile like that's just the way they are and when you're running these things and you have animals crawling all over them and and chipmunks squirrels raccoons bears whatever it is uh if that or antenna orientation is wrong on that tree there's gonna be higher likeliness or higher odds of that antenna actually breaking if there were to be uh, an animal get up on there and mess with it so one of the things that uh, we started doing and we're telling customers to do, we're trying to educate people on this. It's something super, super simple, but keep that orientation to where that hinge is away from the tree. So if there were to be any significant pressure from an animal, that hinge is going to let that come down. You know, that could be, uh, you know, 90 degrees or 180 degrees away from the tree, or it could, it could be 90 degrees. So in any direction, all that's going to allow to do, uh, allow that to do is, um, you know, relieve that pressure. So you're not breaking your antennas losing service and then having to go out to the field and monkey with it that's the whole purpose of these things and that's going to be a common thing we're trying to maximize or minimize we're trying to minimize the amount of time we have to spend in the field with this device so every little thing that we can do to stay out of the woods is uh going to not only increase the odds of for our success um it's going to save you time and be much more efficient and, and you're going to have a better enjoyable time running that camera so number one make sure that uh the antenna orientation is facing away from your tree. Uh, the second thing we want to talk about is external power. And, you know, that probably should have been number one. That is the most important thing. You know, again, common theme here. The whole objective of having a cellular trail camera is to put that to work remotely, be able to manage that from your phone and stay out of the woods, limit the human intrusion. And without running uh, and some type of external power source, you're just not capable of doing that. Yes, you can get a month, maybe two months, um, maybe, you know, 10, maybe 10 weeks out of a set of lithium batteries, depending on your upload frequencies, the settings, your picture counts, all of that. But it's just as easy to run an external power source, set that camera in September, and you know it's going to go all the way until February. You get the entire season of unaltered, the most pure data you could possibly get from a trail camera, all in real time. So it's super, super vital. And in my opinion, there's no, it's the, there is no option. That's the only way, that's the only way to run these is with a, with a, some type of external power source. So we have dedicated a, a you know, the SP18, it's compatible with all of our cameras, but the reason we have that is because of the Exodus render. Those things work hand in hand. Um, and, you know, we have several use cases that uh, we've gotten from November all the way to actually June, you know, on one of those setups that we're still hundred percent. We actually had to go to the field and take it down. Uh, and multiple of our promotional partners and customers have been running these things for six, seven months um, without any, any types of failures or um, loss of battery. So external power source is a must. One thing 
you know, to add to the external power source, I guess this would be mistake number three, just a general theme, is the cleanliness or neatness of your actual set. Um, you know, we've done a lot since 2019 about trying to hide our cameras, do a better job of making them less visible. And, uh, you know, when you're putting two things in a tree, you're increasing um, the mass, the amount of objects that are on that tree, and they're just, they're easier to be seen. There's no way around it. So it is super important that you're being very neat with how you're making these sets. So one of the things that we've, we've done is we keep our camera and our solar panel on different planes or faces of the tree. We never put them side by side. It's always, uh, you know, at least 90 degrees um, orientation around that tree. And with that, you know, you, we have our, our connection cables for, you know, any external power source, but the c connection cables for the SP-18 going into, uh, into the render, you know, you don't want those things dangling around a tree. You don't want to just haphazardly just wrap them around a tree. Um, you know, we don't really have a, um, like a A to B method because every case is going to be a little bit different, but on a smaller tree like this, we got a cluster of trees here. So we have a lot of, a lot of cover, um, that breaks this up, but the best thing that we found to do is either spool your extra cable around your mount or uh, you can actually use it use your paracord and maybe uh, take that spool and tie it up somewhere where it's a little bit less visible maybe on the back side of the tree cinch it down with that paracord and then run your loop over into your camera so visually these things are less noticeable you have more things in the tree so it's going to be more noticeable than a standard sd card camera or a camera without um, without your external power source but, um, you know, it's kind of a give and take to have that ability to run a camera six or seven months and have real time data. Um, you're going to have to put a couple things in a tree. There's no way around it, but um, you can certainly make these sets look very neat and uh, less visible if you just take your time. And even after you get them hung up, maybe take 10, 15 steps back and take a look to see what it actually visibly looks like. So, um, again, those are three things that we see. So the next thing we want to touch on is actually how folks and guys are using cellular trail cameras. You know, guys like to run cameras over bait. They like to use feeders. They like to um, use those mineral stations. And for cellular cameras where you're buying data and paying for those pictures, you know, that's not the best use case for these types of devices. It's not a thing where you're, you want to transmit the same, um, you know, 50 pictures of a doe coming into a corn pile and getting those to your phone. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, by all means. If that's your, uh, you know, if that's your slice of pie, go ahead and eat it. But, um, you know, the best use case for these types of devices are those intrusive places. Maybe, maybe it's a stand that you want to, that um, you want to hang camera on and know when or where, uh, how often that something is coming by, or maybe it's in a bedding area. Uh, or maybe it's just in a property that is remote and you can't get to to actually physically check cards. So those types of use, use cases are really the most applicable for, you, for a um, cellular device. So with that, uh, again, comes data plans. These are cellular devices. They transmit photos or videos through a cellular network, which is, you know, with us, it's Verizon. Uh, you have Verizon, AT&T, Sprint, whoever. Um, that costs money. So they're going to charge us, which in turn, we have to charge you. So you're paying for these, for these photos and data coming to your phone. Now it's super, super affordable, but at the same point in time, you want to make sure that you're matching your data plans up with the amount of photos that you think you're going to get on that camera and the amount of photos that are going to benefit you, benefit you the most. Just like I talked about running, running these things on corn piles, 50 pictures of the same deer over a bait station isn't necessarily going to provide you with critical intel or critical data um, to fill your tag. So, you know, when you're paying those fees for those, for those pictures or for those videos or, you know, the data in general, you can do a whole lot better. So make sure that, um, you know, you're thinking about the data cost in conjunction with those, with those sets. All right, so one of the last things um, we want to touch on and one of the things that we see people um, do, I guess, and again, there's nothing wrong with it, but there's a better way and that is the upload frequencies or upload intervals that people are running on camera. So right now it's the middle of summer, it's the end of June, beginning of July, no hunting season is open. There are no seasons open, uh, at least to my knowledge, where these things are gonna provide critical data for you in real time to really increase the opportunity of you filling your tag. So one of the things that we personally do, what I personally do, what guys Cameron and Jake and the guys at uh, Exodus do and what we tell customers to do, if you're running these things in, in, the, in the summer months, 
run them on a some type of delay. You can run them on a six hour upload frequency, a 12 hour, 24 hour, three hour, whatever it is. Just running those on a delayed upload frequency is gonna extend your battery life. Now, if you're using it for a security application, yes, you wanna keep that in real time, uh, just in case, you know, some type of theft event or something happens where you need to get a hold of, um, you know, the police or law enforcement. But, you know, using these things in the deer woods, there's not, uh, there's not too much, you know, uh, data that is like, I guess, time sensitive. So whether you get that picture 10 seconds after it was taken, or if you get it six hours after it was taken, the value to you right now in season, because there is no season, um, the value is the same. So running that camera on a three, six, 12, 24 hour delay is going to just help you extend those, extend that battery life. So take, uh, take that into note, take all these things into note. And, you know, again, we've been doing this for two or three years we haven't been running cellular trail cameras for six seven eight years like some um you know there's other companies that have been around a lot longer but we we do run a ton of trail cameras uh, we deal with customers every day we see applicable use cases with um, our promotional partners guys like jeff sturgis uh, guys like the hunting public and we have a very broad sample size of of success of mistakes things that people do right things that people um, maybe do wrong and you know that's what we talked about in this video so if you guys find any value in what we're uh, in what we just talked about please be sure to leave a comment below if you have a question or if you have a trail camera tip that you think the exodus family um, would benefit from leave that in the comments below we're, we have a a strong community here and uh, by no means are we the 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 final line or or you know the experts we do do this for a living so i guess we are kind of experts but um you know we're open-minded so if you guys have any tips comments questions leave that stuff in the comment section below smash that subscribe button for us and we'll see you next time